Alright, so it seems like shit is really starting to heat up with regards to Nintendo and their long-awaited Switch successor, the Nintendo Switch 2. Right, we actually know what it's going to be called, right? We don't know if they're going to make the Switch 2. We just know there's going to be another console after the Switch because you don't have a console as successful as the Switch and then make no new console. Everyone assumed it was going to be Switch 2, but it seems like this Nintendo president is giving up the fact that they don't even know where the fuck they're going. So we're going to have to delve into all of this. But if you have subscribed to the channel already, please make sure to subscribe. We are trying to hit 10,000 subscribers this year, but let's get into the news. So it says here, Nintendo says the transition to its next console is a major concern for us. The company wants to alleviate the risk of resetting its user base, says Furukawa. Nintendo president Shantaro Furukawa has said the company's eventual transition away from Nintendo Switch to its next hardware platform is a major concern for the company. Speaking during a Japanese investor Q&A this week, translated by a BGC contributor, whatever his name is, Furukawa said the company planned to alleviate the risks of resetting its 100 million plus user base by building long-term relationships with its users, partly via Nintendo accounts and by using its IP outside of gaming. That's really their method to keep the users using the IP outside of gaming? Okay. Furukawa was replying to a question about how Nintendo has been able to maintain a strong game release schedule six years into the... Has it been six years? 2017? Eight, nine, seven, seven, five years? Right? Like, my math isn't that bad, right? Like, I mean, I graduated like over a decade ago, but still. Six years into Switch's life cycle and what his thoughts were on transitioning to its next hardware platform. In its recent history, Nintendo followed up its big successes such as Wii, 100 million sold, DS, 154 million sold, with significantly less popular successes, the Wii U only sold 13.5 million, and 3DS managed 75 million. And Furukawa said the company was mindful of these experiences. We have already announced a portion of our software roadmap releasing up to next spring, he said. Unlike the past, we continue to have a large variety of games scheduled to be released, even beyond five years of release. So they, they got plans up to 2027. They're planned up right now, okay? If you plan to fail, you fail to, no, it's the other way around. You fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? You know, I got that shit mixed up. This is because the Nintendo Switch has had such a smooth launch, allowing us to focus all of our development resources on a single platform. Well, that's also because you mixed, you know, the handheld and the console thing. So you don't have to do like handheld games and then main console games is just one thing, right? However, the question of whether we'll be able to just smoothly transition from the Nintendo Switch to the next generation of hardware is a major concern for us. Based on our experiences with the Wii, Nintendo DS and other hardware, it is very clear that one of the major obstacles is how to easily transition from one hardware to the next. To help alleviate this risk, we're focusing on building long-term partnerships with our customers. While we will continue launching new software on the Nintendo Switch, we will also provide services that also use Nintendo accounts and other IP outside of gaming software. We intend for this to help build a lasting impact with our customers. I guess they talk about like the movie situation, like they got the Mario movie coming out, like to keep the brand alive outside of the games. Furukawa previously appeared to hint that some form of backward compatibility could be utilized for its next game console in order to maintain and expand Switch's audience of 100 million plus users. Speaking to investors in February, the president said of Nintendo's next gen console plans, there are currently nearly 100 million annual playing users and going forward, it's important to consider how we can maintain and expand on that number. This will also be essential when we consider our plan for the next hardware platform. Officially, the company has said it believes Switch is still in the middle phase of its life cycle and that it's seeking a sixth year of growth, aided by the new OLED model. The hardware and software development teams are in the same building, communicating closely and thinking about how we can propose new forms of entertainment, he said. In order to create a single piece of hardware, we have to do a lot of preparation several years in advance so we are working without stopping. In the end, the deciding factor in whether or not to commercialize a product is whether it can create a new experience. So I guess for a lot of people, they're thinking, well, why is Nintendo so worried, right? The Switch is doing well. Why would they be like, why that the next one is gonna be a flop? But I can also see where Nintendo are coming from here, just based off their track record. They have kind of had that up down cycle when it comes to their systems. I mean, I guess the handhelds have always sold. I mean, the 3DS sold less than the DS, but that's because we entered the smartphone era and some of that market may have been taken by that phone generation. Cause you know, like before the smartphones, like the DS and the PSP were kind of the best things you could have in your pocket. Around 2006, I had my DSP, DSP, I had my D, whoops. I had my DS in one pocket and my PSP in the other pocket. 
and that's just how I used to roll. Because what else could, what else did you need? Right? I mean, you obviously had a phone as well, like your Nokia. If you remember, like 2006, you had your Nokia. Or actually, around 06, I might have had a flip phone because that was also popping off back then. Those of you who remember, but like you had your DS for the best games, you had your PSP for the higher graphic games, and for the widescreen and for the ability to browse and you know watch videos and then you had your phone for contacting that was that was all you need okay may, maybe you needed your ipod as well like you needed your little ipod you know your ipod nano or whatever to keep you going for like mp3 listening but you could actually do that on your psp as well technically but i'm just saying these are the kind of things you had in your pocket and after like the ds which was 2004 2005 around the time we got that the smartphones came 2007, started taking off in the early 2010s, and as a result, the 3DS was never gonna be as big as the DS, even though essentially they just did the DS, but better in every way from a hardware standpoint. I still think game library-wise, the DS was superior, and you might go, well, the 3DS's back was compatible with the DS, so by default, it would still win. But then the DS played GBA games, and I think the GBA was pretty lit as well. I'd rather take the DS and GBA than 3DS and DS in terms of like library wise. That's just my personal opinion, but I could see why Nintendo might be like, okay, well, yeah, we could just do the same thing again, but more power, but we did that the 3DS and it flopped, right? Like people are already saying like, if you just make it more powerful, backwards compatible, maintain the Switch's catalog, and then you should be good, right? And I kind of see what they're saying here as well. It's like Nintendo was so used to innovating with every single piece of hardware that sometimes they go too far instead of playing it a little bit safe. Like the 3DS is probably the safest one they did because they kept the same form factor of the DS. They had backwards compatibility. They just added the 3D feature, which you could turn off. So that was pretty much a safe upgrade and it sold a lot less. With the DS, it was a pretty risky upgrade over the GBA in terms of like the two screen situation, the whole clamshell and it did really well, right? They pushed a boundary there, right? And the Wii was definitely not safe after the GameCube was a standard console and the most powerful console of its generation and yet was a flop. And then the Wii, they just took it in a whole different direction and just took a big risk and the shit was successful, right? So it's like that situation of how do we do something that's fresh without just pissing off everyone? And as they said, resetting their user base. Cause when you have like a, a big group of fans of something, if you go and make too many drastic changes, you might be able to bring in new fans with those changes, but can you keep the old ones as well? The holy grail is to keep your old fans and get new fans. Sometimes people push too far for the new fans and just alienate all the people that used to love the shit, and you create a whole situation of just a whole mess where now you have to rely on the new fans because you pissed off the old ones. It's like, you don't want to just only please old fans and get no new fans. You don't want to only just target new fans and piss off the old. You need to do both. But I do believe that now is the time to play it relatively safe, right? The Switch is working for them heavily. And as we've seen with the Steam Deck, which I'm still trying to get my Q3 gang, people do want this AAA gaming on the go thing. And as much as I want my Steam Deck, this is Nintendo's chance to keep that market in their pocket, right? I still will prefer the Steam Deck just because it's more customizable. I'm a PC gamer, so I like the tinkering factor. But I have my Switch OLED, and the Switch OLED is the most beautiful screen I've used on any system, right? Minus like, I guess phones and shit. I haven't got any other OLED panels besides the Switch OLED on my phone. But to see essentially that Switch OLED panel, but then maybe 1080p for the Switch 2, and for them to add backwards compatibility to the Switch 1 games and allow it to play at 1080p handheld, 4K dock, that in and of itself is already enough for them to keep people around. You do that, you add backwards compatibility, you increase the power requirements so it can keep up with the other AAA releases that are coming out, and the Switch name is already big, so by calling it Switch 2 and making it powerful enough that it really can handle these AAA releases and it doesn't have to be severely dumbed down just to run on the Switch 2, I think that alone will be enough to keep them in the game, honestly, because you're just getting a more powerful Switch and you get to keep the library you already have. I think backwards compatibility is the big one here, but it's also possible that they should lean into some other shit as well. Like for example, Sony's been pushing VR with their PSVR. VR is also a part of the future. I'm not saying bundle it in on some Kinect type shit with the Xbox One, but I think Nintendo should get into this VR world as well and really push on that. Like have some serious VR related games, make their own headset that has some crazy shit and you get like a proper like AAA Mario VR experience, maybe even a Zelda one. I don't know if they could incorporate like VR modes into the games that are already putting out or maybe they'd make separate games for it. But I think 
that could be their little bit of an edge where it's like they take the VR thing and then they nintendo will fire and make it even more mainstream essentially because VR is still on the cusp of mainstream utilization it's there everyone knows about it but not everyone is invested in it i think nintendo if they made that more powerful switch to kept the core tight with the backwards compatibility and the power get all the AAA games running on it that's the bare minimum after that you add in the vr as the this is the next level shit. we've got the vr shit. we've got the mario vr zelda vr whatever franchise they want to use it on while the nintendo franchise, pokemon like pokemon go was a huge hit right that was ar but still it was a huge hit i think leaning into that could be their edge to make the switch to a bit more appeasing because people are going to want to get it just so they can try out some of these vr experiences if they make it nice and accessible you know it connects directly to the switch too it works just fine it's not too expensive that could be their in you know they're saying that they're in the mid cycle of the switch one right so they got a lot of time before switch two or potentially 2024 something like that maybe even later i don't know but by then they should be able to have some kind of vr setup if they were working towards that right that's just my personal opinion but yeah let me know what you guys think about the situation nintendo are a little bit worried that they won't be able to keep their user base with the switch 2 what do you think they need to do to keep that user base and essentially grow it and keep it going but i'm definitely looking forward to whatever nintendo come up with i, I think it's gonna be lit but if they flop you know i got me a steam deck so i'm good either way i'm just saying but yeah make sure to like and subscribe hit that bell more content coming soon to the channel but it's your boy rem remulus rem gang and the map.